there's a post on Reddit asking for some Ghidra help. Let's see what we can do. So before we jump in, if you have any questions about what is Ghidra, how do I install it, or if you want to try some Crack Me challenges of your own, go ahead and check out my YouTube video. There's a lot of videos that focus just on that. And while you're there, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. A lot of the people know about the channel. In Reddit, HexCookie posted this, stating that while they were doing a simple Crack Me challenge, they stumbled across this, which has four variables named differently than they expected and has a lot of hex values when hex cookie was actually looking for an ascii string that has the password so they can continue the crack me challenge well let's jump in and see what we can do to help out so right now i'm in visual studios in which i tried to replicate the crack me challenge that hex cookie was looking at in which I went ahead and started it off with my main function, my count of arguments and my argument array. And then down here it says, if the argument count is two, the first argument of any program is going to be the name of the program itself. And then the second argument is whatever the user is inputting. So what this program wants to ensure is that input of some sort has been put in and only one argument has been put in. If that one argument has been put in, then it's going to initialize these, these variables. Okay, so if we look, the name is pass on all of them, but they all have a different identifier at the end of them. And what hex cookie is looking for, hex cookie is looking for that ASCII string that is the password to the crack me challenge. So the question is. What is this highlighted portion? And how can we get the answer from it? So this highlighted portion is the same as writing this. It is a long, long array that has four elements. So the way that you can look at it is these identifiers up here tell Ghidra and tell the compiler where to put each of these, these uh, long numbers inside of the array. So each byte, I went ahead and I used this down here to get an idea of what we're looking at. Each one of these elements has eight bytes. 48 is its own byte, 42 is its own byte, 6a is its own byte, 50 is its own byte. Each one of them has eight bytes. So this is what this is what I've came to the conclusion of. This zero right here is stating that it is at position zero of the array. And it is eight bytes long because it is indeed eight bytes long. So this is gonna have all of the bytes from position zero to position seven. Thus, this next one will start at position eight. And it is eight bytes long. Thus, the next one start at position 16. Next one will start at position 24. All of them 8 bytes long. So, you're not seeing this wrong. This Crack Me Challenge, it definitely is in a hex array. And it is meant to be in a hex array. It's not an ASCII string that is easily going to give you the answer. So your challenge is to change those hex values and turn them into ASCII characters to be that password so you can continue on in the Crack Me Challenge. So now that we know that the goal is to change the hex array into an ASCII string, let's go ahead and continue on. So, spoilers ahead. You're going to get the answer to your Crack Me Challenge. You can either try to do this by yourself or continue on. And if you're ready for it, then let's go ahead and do it. Spoilers in three, two, one. So here's the way that I decided to deal with this. I'm gonna do this all in C and just a little bit of C++ to help me out. So I'm gonna instantiate some variables and do some iteration through arrays. And I'm gonna change some of those hex values into ASCII characters and print those out. 
So before we get started, there's one thing that I want to do. I'm going to go ahead and scroll all the way back up. And this argument that requires there to be two arguments, I'm going to go ahead and change that to one because I want to go ahead and run it through the debugger. I don't want to put in any arguments to make this work. I don't want to have to go through the command prompt. I just want to hit play and everything works out great. So we made that change. So I got some variables to go ahead and start everything off with. I got a temp variable. I got a password hex string variable. Then I got a new pass variable. And we're going to be using those throughout this whole thing. So I'm going to start off doing an iteration through an array. Uh, this array is going to be four long. Uh, and instead of doing it dynamically, I know that the array has four elements. So I just went ahead and hard coded it in. Uh, this is something you normally don't want to do, but for this purpose, it's going to work out just fine. All right, so we're going to iterate through the values as a string. So going to iterate through the array, and then we're going to print out what position in the array we're at. And then we are also going to print it out as the hex value. And it is going to be whatever hex value is in at that position at that time in which the first one, if all goes well, is going to be this one. And then what I'm going to do is after I print it and let the, the user know, let, let myself know uh, what the position is, I'm going to go ahead and do an S print on it. And I'm going to make it as a long, long and stored inside temp. So just going through the iteration once, temp is only going to have the first element. So if all goes well, it will show this number, but it won't be a number anymore. It will be a character string. And I am doing that so that way I can iterate through the character string later and then change it into, into the ASCII character that we're looking for. It's a, it's a little bit long convoluted way, but it, it does work. So it's going to do that and then save it into this. And then it's going to do it four times. So at the very end, this should have all four elements inside of it. And it's going to print out all four elements. All right, then it's going to set up for the um, hex string in ASCII. So this is where the magic is going to happen. I'm going to take that string and cut those strings down into little blocks. So that way, the first thing I'm going to get is I'm going to get the I'm going to get a a character array of four eight. Then I'm going to change that four eight into an ASCII character. So four eight and ASCII. What is that? So if we really quickly go to let's go to Google and do a search for ASCII table. Jump in the images. We're going to pull up the first one that we see. All right, so this ASCII table is what we're going to be using to get an idea of what we're going to be seeing in uh, here in a few minutes. So let's go ahead and pull it up. So 48, if all goes well, 48 is going to translate into the hex character H. So what I did here is I found 48. And then I see that it correlates to H. So as it goes through the array here, it is going to get that four, and it's going to get that eight, and the null terminator, and it's going to put it inside of here. So now hex has the number 48 as a string. And then we're going to use this function here, which is going to change that, that long character that is in that string. And it is going to change it into an ASCII character. It's going to change it into what the ASCII table said. It is going to change it into 48 if all goes right. So this right here, correction, is going to change it into H if all goes right. So this right here, if all goes well, is going to be a capital H and we're going to print that capital H. And then what I've done is since I'm taking 48 and turning that into its ASCII character, I have to skip 
every other position since I am doing the I and the I plus I. So I've used this kind of as that extra skip. I could have done a modulo. I went ahead and did, did this instead. So if all goes well, we're going to print everything out in hex and then we're going to print everything out in ASCII and it is going to print this one at a time on the same line as this. And then we were going to hit enter to end the program by using the scanf function. So here's the spoilers. If you don't want to see what the answer is, then go ahead and cut off the video right now. But I'm going to go ahead and click on the button. I want to see what it is. So this is what is in position one, which you look at the Reddit post. This is position one. This is position two. This is position three, position four. Throw them all together. This is the really long string. And if you take the 48, it is an H. If you take the 42, it's a B. If you take the 26, it's a J. All the way down this, without the spaces of course, is your password. Pretty cool, huh? So I did that using C and a little bit of C++. So what's the easy way? There is even more spoilers. Y'all want them? All right, well, I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. Better turn off the video now if you don't want to know the super duper easy way. Super duper easy way to solve any crack me's. Use CyberChef, right? Okay, so we've got these. I went ahead and copied paste them into this right here. I'm going to take this. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to come back here to CyberChef. Paste it in right there. And then over here, I'm going to do from hex. I'm going to drag hex in there. And bam. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. This is everything. This right here is your answer to life. Thank you for coming along with me as we ventured to solve this crack me problem. If you guys liked the video, go ahead and click the like button. Add in some comments and then also subscribe. It really helps out the channel a lot. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me any of the social media contacts down below. Hey guys, it's been great. I hope you learned a lot. And until next time, keep reversing.